today we will uh, speak about um, novel antibiotic approaches in the, in the septic patients. Uh, we think it's a very important topic that needs an update. And for this, we selected one of the world experts, uh, Professor Fo uh, Philippe Montraver, who is the, uh, the head of the Department of uh, Anesthesia and Intensive Care, Anesthesie Reanimation, at the uh, Bichat Claude Bernard Hospital in Paris, which is a hospital with a particular uh, interest or specialization in uh, infectious disease. So, Philippe, thank you for being with us. Thank you for the kind invitation. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Can I start with a general question, Philippe? And uh, what is the current status about resistant microorganisms? Is it more a problem with gram negative, gram positive? Is it worse than ever? What can we say? So uh, if we take a, a global uh, worldwide approach, uh, things are getting worse and worse with uh, an increased frequency and variety of mechanisms uh, of resistance among gram-negative bacilli and gram-positive cocci. Uh, remember that we had, over the last two decades, a large spread of ESBL-producing enterobacterials. Nowadays, we have carbapenemase, but we have also Staphylococcus aureus, methicillin resistance in community-acquired infections, resistance against glycopeptides, and I read recently that Vibrio cholerae has some uh, mechanisms of carbapenemase producing strains. So this is a, a, a key issue. And um, uh, would you say we need to reorganize the antibiotics we have to use them better? Or do we badly need novel antibiotics or both? Well, indeed, this is both strategies. And this has been developed over the last 10 years, 20 years, with a, a, a two-hand approach. Uh, firstly, with the help of microbiology lab, with new rapid diagnostic tests, new biomarkers are ongoing. But uh, remember that today we have some uh, mechanisms to speed up the diagnostic process. For conventional approach of pneumonia, it took up to 48 hours to reach the pathogen and then to get the susceptibility testing. These days, with Malditov or with multiplex PCR techniques, we can uh, shorten this delay up to 30 minutes, except on, on, on some specific cases, reaching up six hours. And then, as you mentioned, there are all the mechanisms related to uh, the uh, better way to give the treatments, the available treatments, and of course, new drugs with the uh, uh, Food and Drug Administration initiative of uh, 10 by 20 and then 20 by 20, 20 new agents for uh, the uh, spectrum of 2020. If we, if we go back to what you said about testing, what is the current status of, uh, of PCR techniques to identify the microorganisms early? Can we use it in our intensive care units today? And is it reliable? So uh, many units these days in, in Europe have already these techniques available. But uh, remember that uh, we have many different focus and what has been largely developed is for pneumonia, for bacteremia, but there is still uh, missing uh, zones such as, for instance, uh, deep tissue infections such as bone uh, or uh, some remote tissues. Uh, there is some uh, debate on the use in, for instance, uh, surgical infection, intraoperative infections. So um, it, it's a bit like uh, the, the new era of, uh, let's take the example of what happens in the early 20s with the new cars and new motors. We have all the companies on the starting line and we don't know yet what will be the winner. That's right. Isn't it a problem that uh, we may actually identify too many microorganisms, including those who are not really the, the, uh, the bad one that we should incriminate? This is, yes, indeed, a, a, a key problem. When you use PCR techniques, you will gather all the organisms present in the respiratory tract, for instance, and you'll have to um, uh, 
titrate or at least to uh, think about what should be the pathogen and what is uh, the conventional and commensal uh, strains. So meaning that we need an interpretation and once again, the microbiologist is absolutely fundamental in this analysis. Yeah, continuing with the, the things we can measure, should we measure PKPD more commonly? Should we look at antibiotics levels in the blood to adjust the doses? Are we doing it enough in the world? So probably not enough. In many uh, institutions, we have uh, only uh, dosage for glycopeptides and aminoglycosides, while these days uh, most of the problems are related to the use of other drugs. So that means that, yes, indeed, we need more data about therapeutic drug monitoring, TDM. Unfortunately, TDM is only focused on what happens in plasma, while most of the issues are related to what happens in the tissue, and we don't know on a routine basis what happens in the lung, in uh, the central nervous system, uh, or in the muscles. So meaning yeah. that um, it's an ongoing story, of course, but we don't yet have reliable uh, data to know when you have uh, an accurate plasma concentration, what happens, for instance, in the lung. What for sure we know is that if you have poor lung uh, blood data, uh, it's not good for the, for the lung, for instance. Yeah, right, absolutely. Uh, what about con what we sometimes call continuous infusion, but it's actually prolonged infusions. Should we use it more often in uh, complex cases? Uh, yes, indeed. This is one additional approach developed over the last 10 years. Remember that uh, 15 years ago, it was only bolus infusion, and we progressively... I'm, I'm speaking about beta-lactams, of course. No, of, of course, uh, of course. I didn't course. say it, but it's, of course. it's obvious. Uh, and it was only bolus infusion, and these days, uh, we discovered that it was easy, safe, and good in order to reach high concentration on a continuous uh, level, rather than having peak, sometimes toxic, and then trough concentration, which could be not good enough for reaching the uh, MIC yeah. of the pathogen. So this is a, a, a very well approached uh, technique these days for many uh, penicillins, kephalosporins, carbapenems, uh, and it's uh, largely developed these days. We don't need to wait for the large prospective randomized controlled trials on, the, on this uh, as they are ongoing now. Well, the, we have these trials uh, and for the moment, and to the best of my knowledge, we did not demonstrate a superiority of this continuous infusion versus bolus infusion. But uh, we have to admit that uh, it's a quite tricky situation to demonstrate a superiority, and we need probably 5,000 cases yeah, yeah. To, to demonstrate this point. Especially in heterogeneous patient populations, especially Absolutely. if we look at mortality. Now, Absolutely. let's speak about the novel antibiotics, which are the most promising ones, in your opinion. So when you look to what happened over the last 20 years, we had firstly uh, new antigram positive agents with new kephalosporins, then the oxazolidinones, then the new lipopeptides. And uh, it's only at uh, around 2010, 2015, that we saw the new antigram negative agents with new beta lactams, firstly with inhibitors of beta lactamase combined with all agents with new cephalosporins or carbapenems. And then we had new beta-lactams against anti-ESBL producing strains, anti-pseudomonas, anti-acinetobacter. We have two other families of interest. It could be glycycycline for uh, difficult to treat gram-negative pathogens. But there is also maybe some interest in aminoglycoside and even for Clostridioides difficile with uh, these uh, patients with a recurrent episode of C. diff in the ICU. And so we have new drugs in, in this setting also. Yeah, so it, it's good to see that there are new antibiotics coming up. We will remember that some years ago we were complaining because there was not much in the pipeline, right? Yes, indeed. But, um, well, we have to remember that it's a team effort uh, firstly, involving the emergency department, the intensivists, the microbiologists, the ID physicians, the pharmacists, uh, 
Uh, we also need a, a better understanding of our epidemiology, considering community and healthcare associated infections. Um, and we have, we, we have to rely on the help of uh, many specialties, including microbiology, including the pharmacies for TDM. And even if things are going better, we have to be very cautious in uh, the use of these resources uh, and to select the right drug at the right time for the right patient and for the right duration. That sounds like a very good conclusion of our small discussion here. Uh, we should not be too pessimistic. We should you know, uh, consider that the team approach is very important. I, I, I appreciate that your comment about this. Philippe Montravert, thank you very, very much. Have a good day, my friend. Bonne thank journée. you, Jean-Louis. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.